Good morning. Welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for December the 12th. You know, these technical indicators are designed to determine trend. And as I go through time and education for myself, I find new indicators that I find quite interesting. I'm going to introduce a new one today. And then what I'm doing to save time is I'll drop off indicators that seem to be uh, questionable, such as sentiment. I've decided on sentiment that that's somewhat of a secondary indicator and something that should be mainly used when you think the market's at a bottom or the market's at a top. But anyway, this particular indicator, which is we're using the NASDAQ, we're looking at moving averages, we're above the lower moving average, lower moving average is in a nice uptrend, things really look good on this particular indicator. Now, on the weekly indicator, <clears throat> we're seeing the same pattern. The only warning would be is we do have quite a bit of white space in here. So, you know, if the market were to pull back, that would be normal. Now, the thing I did here on this particular indicator, which is we're doing a ratio of the NASDAQ compared to the consumer staples. So we're comparing basically uh, growth to value. Now, I used to be a value manager, and I can tell you that the primary value stock group was consumer staples. So it really is the right group to be looking at. Now, one thing we have to realize is, is that no strategy, whether it's a value strategy or a growth strategy, is going to work all the time. Because if it worked all the time, then everybody would use it, and then it wouldn't work. So if we kind of go back in time here a little bit and just kind of look at what's going on, and I do have a theory on this. We got a growth stock cycle in 2013 that started around April of 13 and then ran till about March, April of 14. So it was about a one-year cycle, which was 12 months. Then we went through 24 horrific months where the growth stocks did not outperform and basically when, when, when there's no trend, it's hard to make any money. But this was a very nice uptrend. We made money. This is not. And then we got the, the one thing about these corrections that I've noticed over the years is, is that they usually end with some kind of major shakeout or sell off. And that's exactly what happened here. Then we turned and then we ran for 28 months um, in that particular uptrend. Now the current, that, that trend ended around June of 18, and then we've gone basically down here, pretty, pretty nasty drop here, and then have moved sideways pretty much ever since. But the way this indicator works is we have two moving averages, and this is a weekly graph by the way. We have a 10-week moving average and we have a 40-week moving average. And the rule is, is that if the ratio is above the moving average and the lower moving average has turned up, that is a buy signal. Now, as you go back here in time and look at things, you can see where this has happened before. So basically, it does appear that somewhat the ratio is saying that things are the worst is pretty much over and has reversed, but then it can reverse back down again. We'll talk a little bit more as we get through this. Now, another indicator is the number of new lows on the New York Stock Exchange. We're looking good there, no problem, really not a lot to discuss. On the long-term indicator, which is where we're using monthly graph, and we're also looking at the 10-month versus the 20-month moving average, we look for a bear cross or a bullish cross, and we are on a golden cross right now, which is a bullish cross. And the, 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 the moving averages are actually starting to widen out. So this is a very strong long-term uptrend. Now on the global Dow, which is just an index trying to see what's going on internationally, we are seeing some improvement there. We are, we're basically trying to break out up into that 3200 level, and we're currently at 3167. So we are starting to see some renewed strength on the international side of things. On the value line geometric, now remember this is a very unique index. It's a 1700 stock index where every stock in the index is equally weighted. So if this particular index gets into a strong uptrend, that means that the market is broadening out and we're getting a true bull market in a really, really good situation. <clears throat> it's trying to break through 540. Now, on the, uh, another particular indicator that I'm looking at, is the where I'm taking the small cap stocks, which is the Russell 2000 index, and I'm looking for a golden cross. Now, I got this index from Jeff Sott, who was the chief uh, strategist for Raymond James. He's now gone independent. But he is basically saying that we are now on a golden cross on the small caps, which we haven't, the small caps have been underperforming since, you know, 
around June of 18, when everything, when all the growth stocks petered out. So hopefully we're starting to see a turn there. Now, this is the new indicator that I wanted to talk about today. This is called the MACD, or known as the MACD. It is a moving average convergence divergence oscillator. Now, that's a lot, you know, that's kind of a crazy name. Also, it's, it's somewhat intimidating. But believe me, this is a very common uh, uh, mathematical calculation. Now, if you want to know what the calculation is, just Google MACD and you'll see all kinds of information on it. But what it does, it basically measures the trend, but it also measures the trend in the form of momentum of the trend. In other words, how strong is the trend? And then also the third thing it does is it brings in time as a factor. So like here back in 13, which was really a good year for us, you can see we got the MACD buy signal, which means that it crosses above the zero line. See, here's the zero line. And we got a major nice bit of momentum that built, 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 peaked, and then tailed off. And then we got we got a sell signal on MACD. Then early in 17, which 17 was a very good year for us, you can see the buy signal, you can see how the momentum built, and then the time that went on, and then you start to see it fade out. Now, we got the big drop last year, which caused us to have a MACD sell signal. Uh, again, pretty extreme. I mean, if you go back and look at the 15-16 the momentum, this was even worse. So this is when the Fed started raising rates. I still think this period of time looks somewhat like the crash of 87. It's very similar to me, the fact that it went down and then came back so quickly. So here we are, and we've gotten a MACD buy signal on the NASDAQ as of November. So we're starting to build to the upside. So mainly what it's saying to me on a time factor is that we're really just at the beginning of this thing. Now I went and did a MACD also on the small caps. Now I've also got the uh, actual moving averages lines here, but you can see the small, the small caps have uh, started to see some improvement in the MACD indicator. It has not given a buy signal yet, but there's definitely improvement. It's probably going to give a buy signal. Now, I went ahead and did the same indicator on the value line geometric, same as the small caps. You can see that it's improving, but has not yet given a buy signal. Now, one other way I want to make this point, you know, why is it that the growth stocks have, like, here's, this is a graph of Amazon, and we'd all have to agree that Amazon has probably been one of the strongest growth stocks out there. But you go back to around July of last year, and the stock has all of a sudden gone into a downtrend here. Now, at the same time, I have a graph down here of Campbell's Soup, which is what I would consider to be a value stock. And hit ever since June has been in a very strong uptrend. So I guess if you're a growth manager or a value guy, you'd have to ask the question, should I dump my Amazon and buy Campbell's Soup? Well, I don't think so. And the reason this is happening is that, if y'all remember, about six months ago, the media really pounded on the... Uh, uh, the inverted yield curve, which means that the market is worried about a recession. So if the market's worried about a recession, they're going to dump the growth stocks and they're going to buy things like soup and toothpaste and even companies that make or sell water, you know, that kind of thing. Now here are the top five, just to kind of give us a handle on what's going on. This is Amlin Pharmaceuticals. You can see the uptrend, the breakout on heavy volume, kind of rolling over a little bit here, however it looks good. Here's LAM Research, which is semiconductor manufacturing, continues to look good. And if we get a resolution of this China uh, uh, situation with trade, I really think it's going to help these semiconductor stocks. This is another semiconductor called Corvo. Now, they make uh, 5G antennas that go into the 5G handsets. Stock hit an all-time new high yesterday, and I do need to disclose that we do own that stock. This is Target, which is retail that's doing well. Uh, good gap up. However, it's got a flag formation here off that flagpole and just kind of moving sideways. Now, here's an interesting situation, and we do own this stock. This is Tesla. I've been fooling with this company, shoot, it's been about nine years now. Well, let's see, I first found Tesla in 2011, so eight, nine years. Uh, we got a really nice gap up here on earnings 
and the stock is, is, is actually forming a nice cup base here and, and starting to turn up. Now, one thing you might want to do on Tesla is go Google something called Maxwell Technologies. Uh, Tesla recently acquired Maxwell. And the speculation here is, I need to mention the word speculation. This is a speculation. The speculation is that they are developing a new battery technology that's going to use dry electrodes. This will mean about a 20% savings in the cost of manufacturing the battery packs. Also, it was recently announced that Tesla is opening a new battery plant in Berlin and also one in Shanghai. So basically what the speculation is here and what the market, I think, is telling us is Tesla may have a major breakthrough in battery technology that could really change the whole dynamics of the situation. So take a look at it. If you have any questions, give me a call. Thank you very much.